Give me the Bengals to win this game. No matter what the deal is with Jamar Chase, I like Cincinnati to take care of business here. You're tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey none other than your host, former NFL lineman Ross Tucker. Oh, 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 yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker football podcast. It is a Finish Strong Friday presented, of course, by DraftKings. What does that mean? Well, it means we want to finish strong for you, for our families. A lot of you listen on your way to work. Have an awesome, awesome work day. Finish strong so you can feel good about what you got done this week. For your family, all weekend as you're watching college football on Saturday, definitely as you're watching NFL on Sunday. We want to finish strong on Fridays. That's how we do it here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. And our listeners absolutely love that. Even my daughters know about Finish Strong Friday. One way to finish strong, we are presented by DraftKings, by the way, to in any way support the show. So some of it's just spreading the word via social media, basically by engaging. The way the algorithm works is if you reply to any of our posts or you quote posts, that really helps. Engagement helps a lot. So Tony Hughes is the winner. He replied to John Daigle's, uh, a post from John Daigle at Ross Tucker Pod saying that he thought the Ravens offense uh, would struggle last night. So Con, uh, congratulations to Tony there. Just make sure you email me, ross at rosstucker.com, to let me know exactly what press pass you would like that I've gotten recently. Sponsor confirmation email winner, Robert Price. Robert Price got uh, one of the boxes at Future Fans because he cares about his kids and wants to make sure they, they know and love football. Kudos, Robert. Let me know what you would like. And then Cole Bryson is the YouTube shout out, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Shout outs as well for Doug Pfeiffer and Bob Wicker and two of our latest patrons, patreon.com slash RT Media. We have a game to talk about, which is incredible. Cannot wait to finally talk about Chiefs Ravens. Smirnoff is the perfect vodka for crafting delicious cocktails, easy to make and versatile for any and all fans over 21. The world's number one vodka, official vodka partner of the NFL. Grab a bottle of Smirnoff at your local retailer. Head to Smirnoff.com to find recipes of delicious cocktails, perfect for game day. Please drink responsibly. Smirnoff number 21 vodka, distilled from grain, 40% alcohol by volume. The Smirnoff Company, New York, New York. Please do not share with anyone under legal drinking age it's big show time the big show absolutely unbelievable game chiefs 27 ravens 20 uh the 20 minute delay was not cool everybody that showed up for the uh appearance for labat blue light that was cool a ton of illegal formation penalties called early both teams march for touchdowns on their first drive, including Xavier Worthy showing that speed on their reverse, untouched touchdown. Boy, Lamar Jackson, I would say overall, played well in the game. A lot of running in the first half. Rasheed Rice is what we thought he was, the receiver for the Chiefs. Chris Jones, I thought, was unblockable throughout the game. Justin Tucker had a rare miss field goal. Ravens Fumble in the first half was costly, mainly touchbacks, Jack, on the kickoff rule, which I think the NFL will not be overly happy with. That's not what they're looking for. Isaiah Likely had a big game, the tight end, young tight end for the Ravens, and a huge touchdown. But then the Chiefs answered with Xavier Worthy again on a dropped coverage to make it 27-17. Late, the Ravens got a field goal. They got the ball back. Lamar took him all the way down the field. And then he missed Isaiah Likely, who was open. He missed Xavier Worthy. I'm sorry, he missed Zay Flowers, who was wide open. And then on the last play of the game, he was able to hit Isaiah Likely. 
but likely was not able to get his toes down inbounds. I mean, honestly, Jack, you almost couldn't have scripted a better first game for the NFL. It is uncanny how they're able to do this. I said this on social media, at Ross Tucker NFL. I I love Lamar Jackson. He had a good game. He played really well. You have to complete those throws. You know, he doesn't make those throws. I feel like Mahomes would have. And when there's small margins for error, that can be the difference in the game. All right, so we got one game down, 15 games to go. Do not play games with your kids and their fandom. Go to futurefans.com and use the code ROSS. I think I've gotten four or five emails in the last couple days from people that have thought, you know what, Ross is right. Those guys were on the show. They're cool. What I love is their listeners. I know Mike and Mike or Mike and Michael, they listen to the show. So support an awesome business from a listener or those of you that watch youtube.com slash Ross NFL, just like you. And in the process, make sure your three-year-old or five-year-old or seven-year-old or nine-year-old or your nephew or your grandchild, make sure they know more about football than any other kid in their class. Make sure they want to sit next to you and watch these games with you. You know, we're already one game into week one. You could have them sitting next to you for every one of your team's games for the rest of the season. Go to futurefans.com, use code ROSS, you get 10% off. Futurefans.com, code ROSS, unlock a lifetime of memories for the kid in your life starting now. If you do that, you'll be able to just sit on the couch, drinking some Labatt Blue Lights, with your family as they all enjoy the power of we and the power of the NFL together. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Want to know which team is going to win every single game on Sunday? Then listen up. All right, Ross, we're going to kick things off. We got the Green Bay Packers at the Philadelphia Eagles later today in Brazil. Right, and this I could go either way on this one. It's going to be an epic game. I mean, I, it wouldn't shock me if these two teams are in the NFC Championship game. I really think they're both that good, that talented. Now, there's some other teams that will have something to say about that. Certainly the Niners, the Detroit Lions. But it's kind of cool, by the way, all four of those teams that are the top four NFC teams in my Tuesday power rankings, they're all playing in prime time. I'm going to go with the Eagles Uh, I think that they have significant upgrades at both coordinator spots from the way they finished last year. I also think they present a little bit of an unknown for Green Bay. Now, you can say that that's a positive as well for Green Bay's defensive coordinator, Jeff Halfley. But I don't know. He's not experienced. Never been a coordinator, to my knowledge, in the NFL before. So I think there's probably pros and cons of that. So I'm going to give the Eagles the edge in terms of the coordinators. And then I'll also give the Eagles uh, a little bit of an edge. I just thought, and I said this in my Ross report on social media, at Ross Tucker NFL, I just thought Hertz looked really good in training camp. Not just throwing the ball, he looked fast. And I think that in a big game like this, conference game against a team that might be in the mix for conference seeding, I think that Jordan Love is terrific, but I think Jalen Hurts' legs Ultimately, the difference, 24-23 Eagles. Got the Pittsburgh Steelers there at the Atlanta Falcons. I'm going with the Falcons. You know, uh, Falcons made some serious moves towards the end of training camp to bring in Matthew Judon and Justin Simmons. Absolutely love the message that sent the team. As Greg said yesterday, Kirk Cousins Absolutely a professional quarterback. I like Zach Robinson as the OC coming from the McVay tree. I think he'll be a perfect fit with Kirk Cousins. And I think you'll see guys like Drake London, B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts have really good years. I think the Falcons could be a surprise team to make a run in the NFC postseason. I think the Steelers will be better than they were in the preseason, but that was that was kind of ugly. Give me, you know, we know the Steelers defense will be good, though. So give me the Falcons. I think it's going to be like 20 to 17 Falcons. 
Next up is a game you might know a thing or two about. The Arizona Cardinals there traveling to Buffalo to face the Bills. So fired up. I am here in Buffalo beyond excited for this game. I, I'm like thrilled, right? I'm, I'm part of the CBS 6th crew, which means we get more or less the, the game for CBS. It's going to the 6th largest audience. So I guess this is not going to as large of an audience, but I couldn't be more excited. I mean, the Cardinals finished last year amazing, and uh, the Buffalo Bills... Obviously, they uh, are a perennial contender, and it's their home opener. Weather, by the way, it looks like it's like a high of 59, maybe rainy jacket. Even the Bills fans don't get one good weather game. Uh, not good. I'll take the Bills. You know, playing a home, I think that environment. I wouldn't be shocked if the Cardinals won the game. I think it's. Uh, I think there's a decent amount of points in the game, actually. I, I think it's like 27-23. Bills. Next, we've got the Tennessee Titans. They are at the Chicago Bears. The Bears, the Bears, the Bears. This is an intriguing matchup for me. Again, this is one where I'll lean to the home team, but I think the Titans, you know, Levis feels pretty confident about, you know, the improvement that he's made. And I, I, I'm happy for him. I think that's great that he feels that way. They certainly have given him some weapons with Tony Pollard. And Calvin really Bears defense was just so good at the end of last year. And I do think with their added weapons and with Caleb Williams, I think this will be a fun, fun game. I'm going with a close one. 23-20. Nah, you know what? 24-23 Bears. I think Caleb Williams pulls it out late. Next, we've got the Corey Dillon Bowl. The Patriots, they are at the Bengals. Wow, what do you know about Corey Dillon? When were you even born? 2000. That was like middle of his oh. career. What's that? That's like middle of his career. Right. But then like he was done playing before you ever even, you never watched a Corey Dillon game in your life. I definitely did. Well, yeah, because he played in the Super Bowl. I watched the Eagles Patriots Super Bowl. So I did. You I have watched va- very vaguely. Yes. Because I was like five. That is unbelievable, dude. That was my fourth year in the NFL. <laughs> And you were five and barely remember the Eagles Patriots Super Bowl in 2005. That is insane, dude. Insane. Um, At any rate, I think pretty much every week, you guys know, I'll have a lock of the week. It's presented by Larceny, Weeded Bourbon, Lock in a Win, and Seize Tonight. Bardstown, Kentucky, 46% alcohol by volume. Think wisely. Drink wisely. Joe Burrow finally, finally was able to get a full training camp. I think (laughs) think the Bengals, (laughs) thank you. That'll be good for social media. I think the Bengals are uh, poised to probably be the favorite, in my mind, in the AFC North. Patriots told you what they thought about their team when they traded Matthew Judon. I give them a chance because of Jacoby Brissett, but... That's about all. Just a chance. Give me the Bengals to win this game. No matter what the deal is with Jamar Chase, I like Cincinnati to take care of business here. I think that the Patriots defense is okay. So I'll go 24-13 Cincinnati. Next is an AFC South battle. The Houston Texans, they're traveling to Indianapolis to play the Colts. Big game, right? I mean, for those two teams in that division, that's a really important game. I think that's how the season ended, right? Week 18 last year, the winner was going to win the division. It was like a Saturday night game, maybe. Texans-Colts, if I, if I can recall. So, obviously, not really sure what to expect with Anthony Richardson and the Colts. He didn't necessarily look great in the preseason. I'm kind of tempted to take the Colts. I really am, Jack. Like, if I was going to pick an upset, I would pick the Colts in this one. As a reminder, though, because I feel like the Texans might be coming in, feeling themselves a little bit, uh, you know, uh, feeling a little uh, high on on how things are going for them. I'm not going to do it, though. I'll ultimately go ahead and I'll take the Texans because, you know, as I always say, when I make these picks on Fridays, I'm, I'm telling you guys what I would what I would bet on, like what I would put money on. So I'm always going to tell you what I think. I think it's another 
uh, pretty pretty competitive, higher scoring game. Let's go. Let's go. Twenty seven, twenty four. C.J. Stroud and the Texans get it done. Next, we've got the battle for Florida. The Jacksonville Jaguars there at the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins feel a little beat up in this one. You know, the the D-line issues are concerning with some of the guys they lost and obviously, you know, some of the guys they haven't gotten back yet. They have a new D coordinator. They're all raving right now about Anthony Weaver. He better be the real deal. They need him to be the real deal because otherwise they're in a bad, bad spot defensively. This is another one where I'd be very tempted to take the Jaguars. I just can't do it based on how they finished last year. So I'll take the Dolphins, but that's another team. The Dolphins absolutely should be on upset alert. And for those of you that listen to the Even Money podcast, now that the Jags are getting three and a half, I definitely would take the Jags there. Give me the Dolphins, though. A lot of points. Fun game. 31-30, Dolphins. Next, the Carolina Panthers are facing the New Orleans Saints. Two teams I don't have very high expectations for this year, if I'm being honest. Like, not at all. I'll take the Saints just because I kind of will believe it when I see it with Bryce Young and Carolina. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the, uh, the Saints to win the game. Very, very competitive game. The, the thing to watch for New Orleans is their offensive line. That revamped offensive line that obviously has uh, some question marks to be kind without Ramchek. And Carolina's got some guys on defensive line like Derek Brown, but this game ultimately comes down to Bryce Young. Is he is he improved in year two with Dave Canales now at the helm or not? I'll take the Saints until proven otherwise with Carolina, but close game, lower scoring game actually. How about 1916 New Orleans? Next, we've got the Minnesota Vikings. They are at the New York Giants wearing their Century Reds. The Minnesota Vikings. How do you know they're wearing their Century Reds? Because they've been, well, they're wearing them at practice, and it's like the big deal because it's like the 100th anniversary season. Like for the open. Giants? Yeah. So weird. Red for the Giants. Anyway, um, Vikings are favored. I really don't know, man. This is like a straight up toss up game for me. Giants D line is beastly. The game is in New York. They're wearing their century reds. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here that I could uh, I could think about. Um, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm taking the Giants. I'm taking the Giants and Daniel Jones at home. I think Daniel Jones' legs are a factor. I think the Vikings still have some issues. And Sam Darnold, I kind of everybody keeps telling me he's going to play so well. He's going to play so well for the Vikings. Okay, well, maybe he will, but I'm taking the G-men to pull off the upset. How about Giants 21, Vikings 16? Giants defense holds the Vikings to some field goals. Las Vegas Raiders, they are at the Los Angeles Chargers. So let's go with the Chargers. You got to go Chargers here, right? I mean, come on. You know, the Chargers, with the way they've uh, rallied, it seems like, around Jim Harbaugh, the excitement. I know there will probably still be more Raiders fans there than there will be Chargers fans. I'm not taking Gardner Minshew, as much as I love the guy, over Justin Herbert. I think Harbaugh gets his first dub with the L.A. Chargers the Raiders just have have some concerns, uh, to be kind. I'll go Chargers. I, th- I do think the D-line for the Raiders is pretty good. That's an awesome matchup. So I'll go Chargers, and I don't think there's going to be a ton of points. I think the, the Chargers run the ball, and I think it's, um, let's go 17-16, Chargers. Low-scoring game. The Denver Broncos, they are at the Seattle Seahawks. What are you thinking there? I am thinking that um, 
I like the Seahawks. You know, I do think Bo Nix did some impressive things in the preseason. This isn't the preseason anymore. And the D coordinator for the uh, Seahawks, really their head coach, Mike McDonald, he was awesome last year. I thought he was the best D coordinator in the league. He is going to have some good things cooked up for Bo Nix. And I think Bo Nix is going to be forced into a couple mistakes. I think the Seahawks get the win. Not a lot of points in this one either, I don't think. I think it's 20 to 17. That's like my favorite score to pick. 20 to 17 Seahawks. We've got our first Tucker Bowl of the season. Dallas Cowboys, they're at the Cleveland Browns. Nice. With another Tucker teammate, Tom Brady, calling the game. Give me the Browns. I don't know what to expect from the offensive line rookies for the Cowboys. I really don't know what to expect from Deshaun Watson. But they say he's healthy. They say he's looked good. I just think uh, that's a tough environment for Dallas. In Cleveland, dog pound, going crazy. That defense. I don't think there's a ton of points in this one either because of the defenses. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I'm going to go 19-17. Browns, close one, but ultimately the defense saves the day. Next up, the Washington Commanders. They are traveling to face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Another game where I could very easily pick the upset. You know, if you've been paying attention at all to me with power rankings or my article on the 33rd team, I'm high on the Commanders this year because of Jaden Daniels and because of Dan Quinn. And because I'm high on the Commanders, wouldn't surprise me at all if they won this game. I won't pick that to happen I'll show some faith in Baker Mayfield but I'm concerned about the Bucks and Baker Mayfield without Dave Canales he did wonders for Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield is there a drop off there without him fun game decent amount of points in this one actually 28 24 Bucks we've got a playoff rematch the Los Angeles Rams they're traveling to face the Detroit Lions yep and I I will go with the uh, Lions to win the game, close game, awesome game. I, I have a lot of respect for McVay, Stafford, for that coaching staff. I, I think it'll be very similar, actually, to the wild card game. Ultimately, I'll take the Lions to pull it off. You know, the home field advantage in Detroit on a Sunday night is going to be significant, significant. 23-20. The, actually, you know what? I think there's actually a little more points than that. 27-24, the Lions get the win, but it could go either way. Should be an awesome, awesome Sunday night game. And we'll wrap things up with the return. Aaron Rodgers and the Jets, they're traveling to play the San Francisco 49ers. All I want is for Aaron Rodgers to stay healthy this entire season so we can see how he looks how he performs. We can see how the Jets perform. That's all I want is for that guy to stay healthy. Let's hope that starts Monday night. I have no idea. I think I've probably said this on the show before, Jack. I really don't know what to expect with Aaron Rodgers. I, I really, that age, coming off a torn Achilles. Let's hope he plays well. Let's hope it's an epic game. But I'm not picking the Jets to win in San Francisco. Now that they got Ayuk and Trent Williams back, give me the Niners. One of the best teams in football. Certainly one of the most talented teams. I think they take care of business. Close game, though. Um, I do think it's a close game. I'll go Niners 23. Jets have a pretty good defense. Jets 20 on Monday night football. Should be a great game. Should be a great rest of the weekend. So fired up. Remember, if you miss any of the other shows... Even Money Betting Podcast, College Draft Podcast, either Fantasy Feast episode. You can still listen to Place Your Bets for college football. You can still listen to Place Your Bets for NFL football. You can still listen to set the rest of your fantasy lineups or for Daily Fantasy. It's all there for you. We will be back bright and early on Monday morning with my takeaways, Tuck's takeaways for every game week one in the NFL. I think we're done here. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout out Pizza Boy Brewing. I'm going to be there Monday night. Ross Tucker Trivia, 6 to 8 p.m. Please, please, if you're within any vicinity of Enola, Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania, please get there. Sportaculture, humanheadnyc.com, backofficescheduler.com. Love me some myfrontpagestory.com. Best way to get a lovely gift for a loved one and get an autograph from your boy, myfrontpagestory.com.